Hello, Cornerstone Church. I hope today finds you doing well. We're in the book of Colossians still. We're going to start chapter 2 today. And I want to remind us where we've been in Colossians. You see, the, the theme of Colossians is one commentator calls it the sufficiency of Christ. Christ is all you need. And someone has come into the town of Colossae and the church of Colossae and is teaching false doctrine. They're affirming that Christ, oh, Christ is good. Christ is God. But you can have more. There's more beyond Jesus. You're, I can give you some experiences this guy's teaching you, some spiritual experiences that bring you beyond Christ. And Paul's saying, absolutely not. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. So let's remember what we've learned about Jesus so far. We learned in chapter 1 that you and I have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness, that Satan runs, to the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of God's beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And he, he is the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn of all creation. We looked at that and we realized that firstborn meant that he is preeminent over all creation. And why? Because he's the creator of everything that exists. Jesus is. He not only created it, he holds it all together. It says he is the head of the church, the firstborn from the dead. He is the first person to die and be raised from the dead, never to die again. And at the end of that paragraph, it says that you and I have been reconciled to the Father through the blood of Jesus' cross. Because of his death, you and I now have this life. You and I now are in this kingdom of light, the kingdom of the beloved Son. Chapter 2 moves further into this. Oh, let's, don't forget the end of chapter 1. It mentions that this Jesus, all that, per, that person who is all that, dwells in you. And that is the hope of glory. Christ is in you, working in you, his character, turning you into his image. That's chapter 1. Chapter 2, now Paul sets up an important point to show that Jesus is sufficient for everything you need. And you don't need more added to Jesus. It's not Jesus plus something. It is Jesus. So let me give you the first five verses of chapter 2. Paul says this, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you, and for those at Laodicea, and for those who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom, here it is, Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. How much? All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. Whoever this false teacher is, don't let him delude you. Jesus is all you need. He is the treasure house of all wisdom and knowledge. For though I am absent in body, Paul says, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. So Paul here is affirming something that we need a message today. Often today we hear people talking about, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Jesus is good, but you also need other stuff. Hey, if you just come with me down to this seance and listen to this psychic, he'll add to what Jesus gives you. Or if you go down and you do this ritual with crystals, then that'll bring you some spiritual power. Or read your horoscope. That'll help you. Oh, Jesus is just one of many ascended masters. You see, Jesus is a great man, but there's more. No, no, no. Paul's very clear here. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Jesus Christ. That, that, that's the language that comes out of the Proverbs, that life is wisdom and knowledge. And who is the source and the ultimate goal of all that wisdom and knowledge? It is Jesus Christ. That's all you need. So as we move through Colossians, we need to remember this, that Jesus, this image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, who is the head of the church, who is the firstborn from the dead, who reconciled you to the Father through his blood, he is all you need. Pursue him and nobody else. Don't let anybody tell you false information, no, no new age thinking or, or, or any kind of stuff that suggests Jesus is good, but there's more, there's not more. Everything you need is hidden in Jesus. We need to pursue him and unlock that which he has given, has for us. So this is an incredible passage. This introduces us to the Colossians chapter 2, which is filled with the wealth of who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for us. So I look forward to, to walking through this with you this week and next week. Probably take that long to get through chapter 2. It's unbelievable. Have a wonderful day today pursuing this Jesus and looking to him for all the wisdom and knowledge that you need. Those are the treasures we pursue. Jesus 
is the mystery. Jesus is that treasure. Have a great day pursuing your Savior.